Now what we're going to visit are some additional commands that will help us in our drafting. Uh, before we do that, I still have my objects on the screen, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my green selection box and I'm going to type an E for erase and enter and get rid of those so that I can start from fresh. Um, so the first of these additional commands is what's called a construction line. And essentially what this is, is it's an infinite line going off into space. And a lot of times what these lines are used for is for actually setting up, um, you know, uh, guidelines, anything like that that'll help you to start to um, work on your project. So to begin with, the, the command for that, the alias for that is XL. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and click and click and click and click until I hit escape and get out of that. Now, if you're a tool button person, if you go to the draw menu, okay, it's uh, one of these tools. Okay, you'll see that it's uh, one over from the middle, one to the left of the middle. And that's where you can find that toolbar. Um, so what it does is it essentially creates these large infinite lines. Now when I pan around, you'll see that my mouse is being restricted, okay, due to the drawing limits that are set up in this file. And if I do a zoom extends, it only zooms into a small portion, okay, of this uh, model space. And that's because these uh, construction lines essentially are infinite, okay, so they go off into forever. So theoretically they have no extents to zoom to the extents. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, but what these do is, you know, they help us, as I said, to start to set up what we want to draw. And a lot of times they use as guidelines. A lot of times, and what we'll see in a you know, few minutes using some of the modify tools, is that we can actually take them and turn them into lines. Okay, so before we get into that, this is essentially the gist of it. Okay, but again, I'm going to delete these because it's not exactly the way that you work with them. Um, and I'm going to hit E for enter again, and I'm going to get rid of those. Now the way that I use these construction lines is you can from the start set them up to be horizontal or vertical and those are sub options within this tool. So if I type in XL again, okay, to get to the point that that construction line command is activated, if I look down below, okay, and what you can also do is if you do like using this dynamic input, um, you'll notice that after it says specify a point or, there's a little button, okay, it looks like a little icon from your keyboard key that has an arrow pointing down. If I actually go to my keyboard and hit the down arrow key, these same options, okay, are the ones that you'll find down below, uh, you know, in your command line, okay? So theoretically what you could do is you could actually get rid of this command line, okay, by closing it, and if you say yes, you can essentially work right off of your dynamic input, okay? Or else if you feel that you want to have your command line there, and I always think it's a good thing for people who are starting off with AutoCAD to have it there just to see how AutoCAD's, you know, acting and interacting with them. If you want to turn it back on, all you have to do is hold down control and hit nine and it'll appear again at the bottom. Okay, so again, you know, that's just a personal preference. Um, so if we type in Excel again and hit enter, Okay, you'll see that we're at the point where we can start to work with these sub-options. Okay, um, H, if I type in H and enter, what that does is that constrains our construction lines to be a horizontal construction line. Okay, and if I have other objects, I can snap this like any other object using my object snaps to, you know, an object that I have on there. If it's a line, if it's a rectangle, if it's a, you know, circle, whatever. Um, so I'm going to hit escape, okay, after I created a series of horizontal uh, construction lines. And now I'm going to do the same thing and type in Excel again, okay, or else if I hit escape and I hit enter, okay, I'm recalling the back, uh, recalling the last uh, command. So I don't have to type in Excel again and enter, okay. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to hit type in V for vertical and hit enter. And now my construction lines are going to be constrained to the vertical. Okay? Now, um, you know, this is, you know, a tool that you can use, as I said, to create guidelines, but you can also treat them like objects, you know, such as, you know, the same ob type of object as a line is, or a rectangle is, or a circle is. Um, a construction line can also be treated the same way. So, 
what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the modifiers and start to work with the modifiers in order to get them to act like other objects. Okay, um, And you'll see that the modifiers and the modify toolbar um, in the ribbon is right next to the draw. Okay, And so we're going to go through some of these. We're not going to go through all of them, um, but you should definitely play around with them and see what they can do um, because they're really, really helpful. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up, uh, you know, kind of a real world situation. Okay, So again, I'm going to use my green selection tool, just select my uh, construction lines, and I'm going to type an E and enter to get rid of those. Okay, Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in XL and create a construction line, and I'm going to say H for horizontal, Okay, and I'm just going to snap it anywhere. And once I snap it once, I'm going to hit escape to get out of the command. And then I'm going to hit enter to recall that last command and type in V for vertical. And then I'm going to click and hit escape to set another vertical uh, construction line. Okay, or you know, another construction line. This time it's, it's a vertical construction line. Now the first of the um, commands that I want to use is what's called offset. Okay, now, you know, this command would have helped you a lot in your homework assignment, but, you know, I still like to keep a little tricks up my sleeve, and also, you know, I'd rather you guys learn, you know, how to do it, not the, I don't want to say, like, the slower way, but one way versus another, so that you can see how these uh, commands start to build on top of each other, so, you know, sorry I didn't introduce this one earlier, but, you know, you're better for it. Um, learning about it now. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to use the offset key, uh, offset command, and what this does is it essentially makes a copy of the object offset a certain distance from it. Okay. So if I type in, and this is one of those tools that you're going to be using all the time, so you'll very much get used to it. So if I type in O for offset, okay, and offset is also under your modify, okay, it's in this little uh, row of three, and it's at the bottom, okay. You could type in O for offset. And what it's going to ask me to do is it's going to ask me to specify my offset distance. So it's basically saying, okay, before we get into what I'm offsetting, how far am I going to offset it? So this is particularly uh, useful for when you start to set up walls. And this is actually why people will use polylines instead of lines, which I'll show you in a second. But to begin with, what I want to do is I want to essentially say, okay, well, I'm going to offset these walls six inches. Okay, so we'll say six, hit enter. And then what it's going to ask me to do is it's going to ask me to select the object to offset. So I'm going to select my uh, vertical construction line. And then it's going to ask me which side to offset it. So I can either pick uh, the left side or the right side. So if I want to work from um, the inside, I'm going to click on this end. And then what it's going to do is it's going to ask me to, uh, to select another object to offset. So basically, I can offset. What it does is it keeps that six inches okay, in its mind. And then I can offset as many objects uh, you know, as I, until I hit escape to get out of the command. Okay? So I can select my horizontal construction line. And again, it's going to ask me which side. And all you have to do is click on one side or the other to set that. So let's just say below. And I can keep going until I hit escape. Okay, so off to the side, if I show you a line, so if I keep doing lines, okay, and create lines using the line tool, and then my second one, I'm going to do a polyline and hit escape. Okay, if I use the offset command again, okay, and you'll see that if I type an O for offset and hit enter, Okay, what it does is it keeps that six inches in its memory until you change it. So I can keep going to six inches if I want to change it to four inches. Okay, I can change it that way. And then what it's going to ask me to do is select the object to offset. So if we go above and we start to work with the line tool, okay, I'm going to click on the object to offset, and I'm going to click on the side to offset it. Offset, offset. Okay, all I'm doing is clicking the object and clicking what side. Okay, you'll see that with the line tool, it does it in fragments, okay, in segments. Whereas if I use it for the polyline tool, 
it does the whole thing. So that's the big difference between the polyline and the line tool and why people suggest uh, to use the polyline tool to begin with so that it's much easier when you start to offset it.